Correct. And that that happened in 72 also when Nixon moved jobs into China. Mm. Do, do you know what I mean? I was, I was, I was of that generation watching all this stuff happening. Yeah, yeah. And the other, other thing that this book says here is, as, as you know, inflation makes the poor poor. It Absolutely. doesn't hurt us. No, no. It's, it's if, if, if inflation is in asset prices, like the stock market, real estate, we make fortunes. But the working guy out there working for $50 an hour or whatever they work for today, he, he just took a haircut. Then he can't afford to live. That's right. And then you have, and then you have the southern border right, right on our border right here, wide open. People are coming in in droves. They have smash and grabs. This is all stage two communism. Mm. And they defund the police. They're going to try and take our weapons away. This guy Rittenhouse, Kyle Rittenhouse, was an issue of gun control. Supposedly, the press reports that he shoots black people. He shot white people. Yeah, right. It, it, it is so screwed up, I can't believe it. It's coming true today, right? And this is the big one, okay? Who's told my pension? What Marx says, the problem with capitalism, it leaves the bottom half poor. So you could be what he called middle class in capitalism in America. But capitalism will ultimately push you down into poverty. Right. And so in 74, I come back from Vietnam, ERISA comes out. ERISA is the 401k today. Now, you and I know what happens when that that market crash was just coming. Yeah. Yeah. The boomers, my generation, are toast. Yeah, the middle class gets wiped out. Yeah, because we're so dependent on this thing called a 401k, which is a defined contribution pension plan. Now, the defined contribution means if you put in a million bucks, hopefully get a million dollars back. Hmm. But the old, the old pension plan was called a defined, defined benefit. So if you work for Ford Border Company and they promise you $1,000 a month, Ford guaranteed the $1,000 a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a defined contribution, Wall Street, as long as Wall Street stayed up, it was a good deal. So the reason we wrote this book here is my classmates who flew for United Airlines and all that, they lost their pensions. PBGC, Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporations, they took their pensions. So as you and the reason we always get together, we're talking with Jeff Snyder and all this, mm-hmm. he's talking about the Euro, the Euro dollar crisis and how they're pumping up the stock market right now. My prediction is my generation, who are affluent today, will be in poverty in 10 years. Yeah, and I think I'd take it a step further because I think it's not just your generation, but it's American society yes. because now our economy is completely dependent yes. upon the asset prices or the yes. assets that are in the 401k. Yes. So if the 401k crashes as a result of assets, that means the entire economy crashes. And that goes back to what Marx is saying. And that's how those two books really dovetail yes. on one another. And there's one more thing that, that Marx was talking about. So his complaint was just accurate that capitalism will turn the bottom half into poverty. He writes about how capitalism screws employees. He talks about how doctors and lawyers will no longer be exalted. This is in 1848. So for those who have read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or the Cash Flow Quadrant, ease or the employees, they, they're always afraid they're gonna lose their job. So the, so the smart guys with the S's, doctors, lawyers, accountants, and all this, and he says this in 1848, the capitalism was gonna screw the S's. Right. And they screwed, we screwed them via taxes. Yeah, but I would argue that it wasn't free market capitalism that Correct. did that. It was the Fed, it was the central planners, ironically, Amen. that brought his predictions to fruition. He thought it would be the capitalists where it was actually the central planners, if Correct. you really who get are into Marxist. the nitty gritty. Who are Marxists. There you go. Yeah. So it all and, comes and full circle. And that's why George goes around with his end of Fed and he's... He and Robert Barnes are suing the Fed, and yeah. Rand, Ron Paul says, and the Fed, because if you read, not this book, but some of Marx's later books, mm-hmm. and it was actually Stalin and Lenin who said, the Federal Reserve Bank is a Marxist organization. Yeah. Just like Black Lives Matter is Marxist. Now, I have no problem with that. Be upfront about it. Yeah. But everybody thinks the Fed is federal. It's not. It's a cartel. Yeah. Yeah. And what it does is it... I mean, through quantitative easing, through artificially low interest rates, and through bailing out these huge corporations, it takes capitalism and it completely perverts it. It distorts it. And that's why I always use the term free market capitalism, not just 
capitalism right. because people like to argue and say, well, look at what happened during the GFC. That was a result of the, the global financial crisis. Right. That was a result of capitalism gone amok. And look, you know, the Fed came in and bailed out all these corporations. That's what capitalism does. I said, no, no, no. That has nothing to do with capitalism. Amen. And that has nothing to do with a free market. So if you look at things in terms of a free market, which is really what capitalism is, that does not involve bailouts. Correct. That involves actually letting businesses go Bail. bust. That's right. Yeah. So then those people who are prudent can come in, buy the assets, and that benefits society at large moving forward. Correct. They were too big to fail, which is communism. Yeah. And so what? Ha- what? that's why the Fed is the third central bank, but it's not really a central bank. It's a Marxist organization. Yeah. And I would say it's not just communism, but it's kind of this blend of corporatism. And so I, when I hear the word corporatism, the first thing that comes to my mind is what we saw in 2020, and uh, especially with the lockdowns. You got it. Right? Because we it. basically told small and mid-sized businesses you're screwed. that they're, yeah, you're no longer uh, open for exactly. business. You can't do, uh, you know, you're bust. Basically. That's exactly what he's saying in this book. Yeah, so that consolidates all of the demand to these huge mega corporations. Correct. So then is it easier, if you're someone, let's just say that's a Marxist, that's trying to control the means of production. Is it easier to control the means of production when all goods and services are produced by a hundred mega corporations or millions and millions and millions of small businesses? Correct. Obviously those hundred mega corporations. So that would lead one to ask the question, well, was what we saw in 2020 the start of communism? That's right. That's right. Okay. So this here, I just got the Wall Street Journal just said that this morning. Mm-hmm. They said that Europe is sh- shutting down because the vaccine is not working. Right. They, they vaccinate, 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 but it doesn't work. People still get sick. Yeah, especially with this new variant. Right. right. So, they, they, so they're losing control. So rioting's big, blowing up in Europe, like Austria, big place. Uh, Turkey's in serious trouble. And so the world economy is coming apart. And if that crashes the stock market, that's the pensions. Yeah, right. People, my generation of boomers was 1974 when I came back from Vietnam. I find my poor dad broke, mm-hmm. even with a PhD. Exactly as Marx predicted, the intellectuals would go. Yeah. So then in 74, ERISA comes out, which is the 401k. And today, as we speak in 2021, December, 10,000 boomers are retiring every day. And they're dependent upon the stock market. And if the euro dollar system comes down, what do you think is going to happen to the U.S. stock market? Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, You have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages, 
and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy, but the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.